Lacking the rudiments of rationality necessary to critically analyze ideas, the average bodybuilder today finds himself impotently bewildered, awash in an oceanic proliferation of new theories on training and nutrition. Unable to even begin to properly evaluate or judge the flood of conflicting contradictory misinformation, most bodybuilders flounder helplessly, taking years and years to develop a physique they could have should have obtained in months, or allowing the flame of their passion for a more muscular physique to be extinguished, they either cease their training efforts entirely or continue going to the gym merely as a social ritual to temporarily stave off the inevitable consequences of their refusal to think, namely anxiety and fear. Just a few days ago, while explaining to one of my local training clients the reasons for working out only once every four to seven days. A man in his mid-thirties, whom I've seen in the gym training every day for years, and with nothing to show for it, had apparently overheard my explanation and intoned, Mr. Menser, what you just said about training so infrequently sounded intelligent and logical, but if I don't train every day, what else am I going to do with my time? I was astonished at such a question, as the individual obviously didn't understand that he was implicitly admitting that his life had been one enormous betrayal. Why, sir, I responded, I might suggest a number of things for your consideration. Read a novel or philosophy book by Ayn Rand. Learn the laws of logic. Translate what you had merely sensed about the nature of existence into an explicitly verbalized philosophy of life. Why, you might even study neuroanatomy and physiology. Yes, neuroanatomy and physiology. I'm always amazed at how much human beings take for granted their sacred existence. Or take up a trade, enroll in a class, go to the movies, take walks in the park. You might even learn about the true nature of romantic love. In short, you might seek to actualize your human stature. He scratched his head and said half-heartedly, yeah, I suppose I could find something to do. As a microcosm of the culture at large, the bodybuilding subculture, too, exhibits an appalling lack of respect for truth, knowledge, logic, and rationality. In certain cases, so great is the distance of ideas in this field from reality, one might characterize them as reflective of a type of modern madness or schizophrenia. For instance, the premise that there is no such thing as overtraining, only undereating. This idea represents the apotheosis of irrational thinking in this field as it contradicts the most basic fundamental principles of bodybuilding nutritional science. A brief logical critical analysis of this idea will reveal it immediately as a monumental absurdity. The notion that there is no such thing as overtraining, only undereating, implies that if you will only agree to overeat, then you can infinitely extend the limit to which you can train to stimulate the body to grow. And this simply is not true, because the supply of biochemical resources used up in the process of training to induce growth stimulation is, of course, strictly limited and cannot be restored instantaneously, which would have to be the case for this assertion to have any merit, no matter how much or how often one eats. Therefore, the amount of training one may engage in before it becomes overtraining is strictly limited. And if it were possible to infinitely extend the degree to which growth could be stimulated through the indefinite extension of training time and of the amount of food consumed, there would already be a legion of bodybuilders whose muscular development would far exceed that of Dorian Yates, as most bodybuilders today are chronically, grossly overtrained and overnourished. Despite being touted as the science of modern bodybuilding, very few have engaged in any rigorous scientific thinking on the subject. In fact, the legitimate scientific medical community has long looked upon weight training rather gingerly, only recently according it a minuscule respect. The actual value of bodybuilding goes largely unnoticed because of the preponderance of low-grade mentalities controlling it. Unlike the hallowed researchers and practitioners 
of Western theoretical medical science who rightfully pride themselves on exacting intellectual standards and noble ethical principles, too many of those involved in the sport industry of bodybuilding, and to a significant degree exercise science, have no explicit intellectual standards, and worse, their degree of control has emboldened them such that they actually take pride in violating ethical principles with promiscuous abandon. Unfortunately, too many of the self-styled experts in this field not only fail to make a nominal effort to stay apprised of the latest state-of-the-art knowledge, they actively evade such knowledge and even work diligently to suppress valid ideas that would help people to achieve greater progress as well as to protect their health. Sheer innocent ignorance is one thing, but the conscious evasion and willful suppression of life-enhancing knowledge is another. The motive of such people is the irrational desire to project and protect an image of incontestable superiority and omniscient infallibility. Such only serves, of course, to make them look ridiculously pathetic and to pose a threat to the young and innocent who are apt to be duped by the crude sophistry of these not-so-big big shots. When someone establishes himself as an authority in bodybuilding or nutrition or any other arena involving human well-being, that individual has an enormous ethical responsibility to do everything within his power to keep abreast of the latest word in human thought in that field. So there is absolutely no excuse for the bodybuilding orthodoxy after 50 years to continue promulgating the notion that more is better, advocating that bodybuilders train for hours a day, six days a week. As the dangers of overtraining have been described and well documented for decades, my goodness, the issue is human well-being. What does it take to make some people indignant? While those I just described should be censored heavily, they are instead among the most successful in this industry.